there, I'm Brittany Newman. And I'm Tom Bradley, and welcome back to the Midwest Tour. And Tom, we hit up a brand new track over Memorial Day weekend on Sunday, the Indian Hills track in Ducoin, Illinois. Yeah, this is a new, brand new track down at the state fairgrounds, and uh, Brittany, you were actually down there. Tell us a little bit about it and what you saw. Well, first off, I'll start off, you know, you said it's in the Ducoin State Fairgrounds, so all the roads around the track are so nice. Um, you have a lot of hookups there for all the RVs. And another great thing is there's going to be a lot of entertainment going on some nights when you're at the races. Like on Saturday night, they had a demo derby going on, so a lot of riders went down there, checked that out, got to hang out with the family, which is an added bonus. Then when you get on the track, I rode it on Saturday and Sunday. It is sick in my opinion. I had so much fun riding it. It's a natural terrain, um, it's fast. They have a mulchy dirt mixture kind of <laughs> deal going on. It gets really rough. Um, and some of the corners it's neat because they have option sections. So, you know, you have the sections where you can go to the inside, outside, rollers and that. You don't find that on a lot of tracks. And also the uphill start, which you don't find on a lot of tracks either. Yeah, the uphill start's very unique. I've only seen one other track in recent years that, uh, that has had an uphill start other than, you know, some of the pro tracks. And it's it uh, really adds a whole other element to the track because it's a little bit harder than you think. And they have another big race coming up, I believe at the end of September. It's supposed to bring in a lot of riders, and I hope that everybody that was there at Memorial Day weekend will be there for it. And we'll jump into the highlights and see how they did. Tom, the first model we're going to look at is the 85 class. There you can see hitting that big breaking bump going into the corner. That's the... Uh, 714 of Mason Kershaw, one of my favorite riders to watch. When he <laughs> airs out all jumps, it's just so cool. I have a ton of cool pictures of him. And then you also have the 105 of Jason Thomason on the Suzuki before and or behind him. And out front looks like the 22 there, that's Justin Poulter. He's got a little bit of breathing room, not much, but uh, the other two riders are right there to capitalize if he makes a mistake. And Justin's actually a local boy from Murfreesboro. That's only about 15, 20 minutes from there. Not far at all. It's always nice to have a track in your backyard. There's another good shot of Mason Kershaw as he hits that uphill jump and just flowing through the corner. He's going to have a great race with Jason Thomason here. You can see Thomason kind of going off that tabletop by the finish line just a little bit. Yeah, it looks like he dropped back about, oh, maybe a second or a second and a half right there. So going to the last lap, that's really not something you want to do. Give that uh, guy in front of you some breathing room. But as you can see there, he made it right back up. And at the finish line, he's right on his rear tire. In the plus 25 class, we had our Midwest Tour rider there, Ryan Tracy. And then the battle for third was pretty impressive. Yeah, here we're looking at the 167, Jake Lustig. And he's got the 187 of Ronnie Ford right behind him. Now, Ronnie is... Not quite twice Jake's age, but he's still, uh, you know, an older rider. He's right there running the pace here. He's trying to make a move on the inside there. Yeah, he was ripping, took the inside there, going over this uphill triple. The 167 is going to try to squeeze to the inside there, not quite make it happen yet. Here you can see Jake uh, getting a good drive out of that corner there, and he gets by the inside of uh, Ronnie Ford right there to take back over the number three spot. Ronnie's going to swing from the outside, but not quite happen. And all while this was happening, the 228 of Derek Lice is on front, just hauling. Derek was impressive all, all weekend long, really, uh, both here and at LTM. And really no, uh, no challenge here in motor number one. Now he's going to look back, and he's got the motor win. Here we're taking a look at 250C class motor number one. we got the 347 right here. That's Philip Anderson. And also the 291 of uh, Bailey Ed Edsel. And he's going to be the one to watch in this moto. You have the 311 coming into the picture, and that's Brian Wittich. I believe I'm saying that right. And he just made a move on the 135 of Mike Revolta. And as you can see right behind them, the 291 of uh, Edsel jumping past Revolta on that uphill triple. Also, 17 is in the picture. That's Brennan Rudolph. And early in, the, early in the moto, he was leading and then kind of fell back. And here we're on the final lap. Edsel has worked his way up from outside the top five to take over the lead. Running in the number two spot there on the 798, that is Corey Matthews. Here again, another look at uh, Ed Sol as he's coming up to take the checkered flag for the moto win. Here in the 250B class, we had 19 riders in it. It was one of the bigger motos of the day. He had the 63 of Race Baker in there, and he's going to be battling for one of these top five positions that was you know, really going at it in his B class. Looks like he had kind of a mediocre start. You can see his front number plate covered with uh, dirt and mud as he's trying to get around the riders. But uh, here's a look at your leader, the 694. That's Richard Turner, and he was owning it out there. Yeah, I really like the color scheme on that bike. The red just goes well with the yellow there. Here you can see him going through the roller section. Looks like he took the outside option there. This looks really confident when he's riding. This is something I think he's actually catching up to a few of the A riders that were on the previous start. Well, maybe before you know it, uh, maybe we'll see him making the jump up to the A class to challenge those guys for the money. And with Loretta's in the picture, you know, coming up, this is something that you need to do at local races if you're trying for Loretta's, is dominate locally. As you can see here, he's, he's just another zip code. 
All right, we have the Schoolboy 14 and 16 class. You have the 384 of Ryan Kreitz on the Cowie, and also once again the 694 of Richard Turner. As you can see there, Turner just carried so much more momentum around the outside and just went right around the outside of Kreitz, and uh, he's going to go after the leader, Thomas Goodnick. And Tom, like you said, you see uh, Richard Turner catching up to Thomas Goodnick to go for this lead. And this is lap number two, so he's still got the majority of the moment to get the pass made. And uh, it should be noted, Goodnick just moving up to the big bikes this year and so far riding pretty well. Yeah. And here on the last lap, it's really closed up. You can see Turner taking a few creative lines there. Thomas Goodnick still leading, but Turner just going to get around him. Put a little bit of a bump on him in that corner, and they're going to see the deal. Yeah, you can see taking the outside of the rollers really set him up for the inside of that last right hander there. And there's the checkered flag, and he's going to take the moment win. Here we're jumping right into the open A motor number two. Uh, there you can see the 814, that's Mason Eck. He's got heavy pressure there from Midwest Tour rider Ryan Tracy. Yeah, these two really had a great battle when they were going for third place. Just in front of them, you can see the 691, that's Alex McWilliams. And here out front, once again, 228. I mean, what else can you say about the guy? Derek was just on a roll. He has such a great style when you watch him ride. Now, he just recently moved back from Texas, so he's still kind of getting reaccustomed to some of the tracks up here. And jumping back to this battle for a second, you have the 691 of Alex McWilliams and also the 814 of Mason Eck. And Mason Eck was riding so good this weekend, really putting on some hard charges towards the end of the Notos. Here again, you still got Eck uh, behind McWilliams here. McWilliams doing a, an excellent job holding him off. And you can see Eck here trying to go to the inside and make that pass, but as they drop down the hill, you can see McWilliams still holding the edge there. And Mason was eventually able to make the pass and took second place in this moto. Uh, like you said, it makes it a lot easier when you get a start. So uh, track was good. It's starting to dry out a little bit. It was still plenty rough. And uh, you know, there's routes out there. Uh, the plan is, as of right now, is to uh, try to get to Loretta. So. We'll see how that goes. Uh, my regional's at Mount Carroll, which is in a few weeks, so just trying to ride as much as I can before then. Like a third or fourth place start. I was pretty far back. I didn't know if I was going to, you know, like, I figured I'd just put my head down and charge. Roos was hurting pretty bad, and, you know, it stuck with it, and I had a real good battle to the end. I mean, with Alex, it was all the way to the end. You know, it was a real good race. And, and Travis, um, he just got me I mean it's like you hit the nitrous button going down the straightaway right here and I gave it all I had I tried to sprint at the beginning of the moto and I kind of wore myself out I mean I had enough left in the tank but I tried to pull away but I just couldn't get away from him and Tom that's wrapping up our Indian Hills highlights now if you want full results from it you can find it at district18racing.net mm -hmm. and also we're uh, looking forward to our next show in June that's uh, the weekend of June 9th will be at Balance MX in Bowling Green Kentucky it's the youth regional down there it's going to be stacked it's one of the first regionals of the year and a lot of people are looking forward to it the youth regional so uh, you'll be there racing Brittany that's the trying plan to, as of right now trying to hoping earn your way into Loretta's hoping so hopefully a repeat from last year we'll see all right so we're looking forward to that and we hope to see you there yeah.